first and foremost, let me pull this up. I see Matthew F. And, Ma and once again, people, ask your stuff in the Q&A. All right, yeah, this yeah, makes please. it way easier. You all see all the other comments coming through. Uh, one Matthew F. said, as an independent artist, what is an appropriate amount to invest in marketing versus uh, NPR for a single versus an EP project release? Would a budget of five to ten k be effective, or should I have saved more? Hold on, I want to open this up so I can so I can see it too. Um, oh, you can see it now. Good, good, good. Yeah, I, I can see it. So as an independent, my my bad, Brandon. As an independent artist, what's the appropriate amount to invest in marketing PR for a single versus the EP? So usually, I will answer that part of the question first. Usually, we're gonna put double what we're spending into the EP on the single. I mean, um on a single in the EP. So let's say, for example, if I'm spending $2,000 per single, when the EP comes, I'm going to spend 4,000. So usually I'll double my single budget for the EP. Um, would a budget of five to 10K be effective? Yes, yes, any, any budget can be effective, but the, the thing about it is, and what, I, what I'm going to train you guys in this course, it's all about what the content is already doing. I don't spend money on things that aren't already working. Should I promo new singles, then drop the EP? Um, yes, or drop the songs as singles. What's the best way to go about this? So I always drop the maximum amount of singles as possible. You know what I mean? In the, when it comes to the EP. Seven, seven song EP, that means I can drop three singles because technically the rules say you can't have more than 50% of the music out. If you want to do a pre-order, you can't have more than 50% of the music out um, when you drop the pre-order. So that means I'm allowed three songs. So I'll drop three singles, pre-order EP. Like a lot of times people just drop stuff, right? A moment is how do you make it memorable? What are the things that you do beyond just dropping? All right. So let's just say if I had a concert, all right, or a live vir a virtual, live virtual show or whatever, then I might add merch related to that show and that experience. You know what? Perfect example. Travis Scott, um, the world. Good Lord, what's the name of the world he just did? Astro World, right? And he made it a moment. He could have just dropped a project named Astro World, right? But he had all of these different pieces, right, under that theme. So think about moments as themes, right? That's the easiest, simplest way, right? And do multiple things under that umbrella related to it. And then, of course, you have to do the work to get that scene. But that's the easiest way um, without going to, to too much time. It sounds so crazy, but I'm talking about statistically, right? This is why it's important. When I said earlier, stop looking for uh, crazy unique things and all these crazy gems because when I from the back end from the agency when we talk about what works sometimes it's not even something that just seems genius it's like yo bro, this is just doing better doing covers still works doing your own music but acapella and letting people actually hear your voice right especially that versus a lot of these uh produced like you put you know people will be at the mic and then they'll produce it Yes, that can work, but the best, best, best is literally like when people can just hear your voice. The, the, the numbers on those are crazy, especially on a platform like TikTok, especially if you put a mic or, or, um, or something that's signal, signaling that it's live, a, a guitar. The, the stats are just there. If you haven't had one blow, uh, then it's about maybe more timing or the, the right song. Um, maybe the platform that you put it on but i i promise you it that is that's that simple and then another good thing another thing you can do that is a little bit more unique is taking popular songs and not just doing a cover but doing an alternative perspective like a guy did his song and then you do the girl's perspective responding to what he said or vice versa that's something that works very powerfully too because now you're you know people know the regular thing and now you're responding so it's more of a conversation um in that so that's another thing um is there a distribution service like TuneCore or DistroKid for independent artists that you would recommend or prefer and why so every distribution service is literally a preference TuneCore versus DistroKid versus United Masters they all provide the same service but one of them pay style may be a little different like United Masters has where you can do a subscription versus where TuneCore you pay per per release so it's really about your preference and then also how they give you those analytics on the back ends. TuneCore dashboard looks different from DistroKids dashboard. Which dashboard do you prefer? And so distribution at a, at a, at a self-service level is strictly based on preference. So, you know, I would advise you try them out, but I also would say you to this, this to you is 
once you find one you like, I will move all of your music to there because you don't want three or four dis different distribution company paying you. You want to have it all in one place, all in one place for ease of use. So definitely, you know, figure out which one you like the best and then put all of your music in that one home. So because we're in a streaming era, there's no such thing as re-release. Once you've distributed something and it's touched Spotify or Apple, there's a code. And that's always going to live. Even if you take the song down, you know, wait three months, re-release it again, it's going to show up the same. The streams account still going to be there. So there's no such thing as re-release it in the streaming industry. Um, but again, music that's already out is never old. It can be five years, you know, the song's been out. It can pop today because of the tools that we have at our disposal, because of how we're marketing music. So do you think it's best for artists to stay independent once they build a fan base? What are the benefits of labels these days? So again, this is a preference thing. This is, you know, what do you want to do? Like um, Money Man is an independent artist, you know, and he's streaming, I want to say about 30 million streams a week, right? So he could go to a major label and maybe get to the point where he's streaming 100 million, but he just gave up 80% of that money. So now he's making actually less than he would have been making if he would have just stayed independent. And so that's, it could be a preference. It's really about how large do you want to be? Because here we go, he's making less from streaming, but now because he's a larger artist, he can charge more per show. So it's, it's, it's all a preference. It's all, it's, all, it's all about how you want to handle your business. Do you want to bootstrap it and, and do it yourself? Or do you want a partner in a label that's going to pay for everything? You know, it's, it's really about business and how do you want to conduct your business? So there is no right or wrong. There is no better or worse. You know, a, a major label artist, um, has just as much opportunity as an independent artist. So I, I, I either way is totally fine. Wow, what's up, it's Brand Man Sean. And if you got value from this video, we got a ton of value to offer you in brandmannetwork.com. It's completely free. The link is in the description if you want to talk with us directly or some of the people in our community in between videos so you can ask questions specific to you or hop on one of the live sessions that you see on the channel when we're speaking with other artists. Brandmannetwork.com is the place to go. Hop into our app. It's really dope. And you get access to free courses as well but it might not be free forever. So hurry up and get in there before I change my mind.